Last week, Amazon didn't just announce a new chip. They dropped a bomb on the entire AI industry. On stage in Las Vegas, AWS introduced its new Tranium 3 chip and claimed it could deliver more than four times the performance of its predecessor, use around 40% less energy, and cut the cost of training and running AI models by up to 50% compared to equivalent NVIDIA GPU systems. It was the boldest claim Amazon had made in years, and for a moment, the entire AI world paused to process it. And what's so shocking is that AWS didn't just talk about improvements. They positioned Tranium 3 as a direct challenge to NVIDIA's decade-long control of the AI compute market. The message couldn't have been clearer. The era of one company supplying nearly 90% of global AI training hardware was beginning to fracture, and Amazon, the world's largest cloud provider, was the one lighting the fuse. The timing of Amazon's announcement could not have been more strategic. NVIDIA had only recently begun shipping its Blackwell B200 GPUs in volume throughout mid-2025, following their original unveiling at GTC 2024 as the successors to the massively popular H100 and H200 lineup. Blackwell was already being hailed as the next era of AI compute a technological showcase with higher memory, faster bandwidth, tighter interconnects, and an NV-Link system that lets 72 GPUs behave like a single supercomputer. Everyone expected Amazon to stay in NVIDIA's shadow. Instead, they walked out with a chip designed specifically to attack NVIDIA's weak spot, the economics of AI. Amazon didn't challenge NVIDIA head on, Instead, it went after the only battleground NVIDIA cannot afford to lose, the economics of AI. When AWS said Tranium 3 could deliver the same class of AI training at up to half the cost, engineers, investors and researchers immediately understood the implications. AI companies today spend not just millions, but hundreds of millions of dollars in compute. The largest model training runs now consume so much electricity that entire data centers are built around them. A chip that significantly lowers cost per token is not just another component, it is a structural change in how AI is built and who can afford to build it. But to see why Tranium 3 matters now, you have to rewind to the moment Amazon introduced the first generation Tranium chip. At the time, the entire AI world revolved around Nvidia. The V100 and A100 were the default engines for every model, every experiment, every startup. AWS customers were begging for more GPUs. Amazon was paying billions to Nvidia, and everyone could see where this was heading. More demand, more shortages, and more rising prices. So, Amazon built something small but strategic. Tranium One. It wasn't designed to defeat Nvidia, it was designed to give AWS a foothold. Tranium One provided solid BF16 and FP32 performance, integrated tightly into the EC2 ecosystem, and introduced the Neuron software stack, the compiler and runtime layer that slowly taught developers how to train models without relying entirely on CUDA. It was Amazon's way of saying, we need our own path. It worked. Not because Tranium One changed the industry, but because it gave AWS the one thing every AI chip project needs, real world data. That allowed them to build Tranium Two. Tranium Two was the moment Amazon went from experimenting to competing, featuring 96 gigabytes of HBM3E memory and redesigned Neuron Core V3 engines built specifically for transformer architectures Tranium 2 delivered a major leap in capability. AWS introduced the Train2 Ultra Server, a system that connected 64 Tranium 2 chips in a single box, producing more than 80 FP8 petaflops of compute. Suddenly, AWS had something that could train truly massive language models, and real companies used it. Anthropic revealed that more than 1 million Tranium 2 chips were involved in the training and deployment of Claude models. Amazon's own AI teams relied on it internally, and countless startups adopted it, 
because it was simply cheaper to run large models on Trainium 2 than on comparable GPU clusters inside AWS. That success created the pressure behind Trainium 3, a chip that didn't need to match NVIDIA on raw performance. It only needed to make AI affordable again. Which brings us to why last week's announcement hit the AI world so hard. Trainium 3, built on TSMC's advanced 3 nanometer process, packs high-density compute units optimized specifically for training transformer models. The AI architecture behind generative systems like Claude, Gemini and ChatGPT. The chip holds 144 gigabytes of HBM3E memory directly on the package, a major increase from the 96 gigabytes on Trainium 2. More importantly, it delivers nearly 5 terabytes per second of memory bandwidth. This is the kind of bandwidth required for trillion parameter models, which are increasingly memory bound rather than compute bound. When a model is too large to fit in cache and repeatedly has to fetch data from slower memory, performance collapses. Trainium 3 was engineered to keep data constantly flowing. The compute capability is equally significant. At 2.52 petaflops of FP8 performance per chip, Trainium 3 enters the same computational class as Google's Trillium TPU V6 and the lower end configurations of NVIDIA's Blackwell GPUs. But the real breakthrough is how AWS scales this compute. Unlike traditional servers that house eight GPUs, AWS designed a new ultra server architecture that can hold up to 144 Trainium 3 chips. This gives a single machine more than 360 petaflops of FP8 compute, a number that would have required multiple GPU racks just a few years ago. These ultra servers can then be woven into massive ultra clusters, enabling companies to run enormous distributed training jobs entirely inside AWS's cloud without competing with the global demand for GPUs. But the comparison becomes sharper when Google enters the frame. For years, TPUs were Google's secret weapon. They powered internal workloads like search ranking, YouTube recommendations, maps routing, and Gemini model training. TPU V5P pods deliver more than two and a half exaflops of FP8 compute. TPU V6 Trillium introduced higher energy efficiency, nearly 200 gigabytes of HBM memory and bandwidth levels comparable to Trainium 3. And then came Ironwood, Google's most ambitious TPU yet, a chip designed not just for performance, but for planetary scale clustering. Ironwood delivers around 4.6 petaflops of FP8 compute per chip, with 192 gigabytes of HBM3E, placing it directly in the same performance class as Nvidia's Blackwell and well above Trainium in raw throughput. But Ironwood's real strength isn't inside the chip, it's in the environment Google built around it. Ironwood sits inside pods of up to 9,216 TPUs, all connected through Google's three-dimensional torus mesh and an optical switching layer that can literally rewire the cluster in real time. It's the closest thing the industry has to a living supercomputer. And that's where the philosophical difference becomes obvious. Google builds TPUs, largely for Google. The chips are deeply integrated into Google Cloud's internal infrastructure and tuned for Google's software stack, JAX, XLA, and Pathways. The ecosystem is powerful, but it is built inward, optimized for Google scale engineering rather than broad accessibility. Even though Google now sells TPUs to external customers like Meta, the TPU environment remains far more specialized and far less open than NVIDIA's or Amazon's. Amazon, by contrast, builds Trainium for customers. The Neuron SDK is designed to be accessible, modular, and compatible with the major AI frameworks. Where TPUs prioritize Google scale optimization, Trainium prioritizes market scale adoption. This contrast becomes even sharper when NVIDIA re-enters the picture. NVIDIA's current lineup is still unmatched in raw performance. 
the H100 and H200 dominate today's large model training runs. Blackwell B200 pushes that dominance further, with nearly 200 gigabytes of HBM3E memory and compute throughput, unlike anything seen before. And at the system level, the GB200 NVL72 rack essentially merges 72 GPUs into a single oversized accelerator, a supercomputer inside a cabinet. Most importantly, NVIDIA continues to hold the most powerful advantage in the entire AI hardware world, CUDA. Combined with KUDNN, NCCL, Tensor T, and a decade of ecosystem maturity, CUDA is still the backbone of almost every major AI framework on the planet. But NVIDIA faces a problem that Amazon and Google do not demand. The world wants more GPUs than NVIDIA can produce. Even with massive expansion at TSMC, Samsung, and new US fabs, the global supply remains tight. GPUs disappear from cloud inventories instantly. Companies wait months to secure capacity. Prices remain high because demand is relentless. And this is where Tranium 3 poses a real threat. It doesn't have to beat NVIDIA on pure performance. It only has to be good enough, cheap enough, and available enough to divert a meaningful percentage of demand away from GPUs. Amazon used the launch event to emphasize its full-stack AI ambitions. Alongside Tranium 3, AWS showcased the Nova 2 model series, which includes text, image, video and voice models designed to operate across Bedrock, Amazon's unified AI platform. And woven subtly into the keynote was Amazon's quiet confirmation that Tranium 4 is already in development. While details were limited, AWS hinted that Tranium 4 will be the company's first chip built specifically for frontier-scale multimodal training, the kind required for trillion-parameter successors to Claude, Gemini, and Amazon's own Nova models. Bedrock now hosts models from Mistral, Google, Anthropic, NVIDIA, Minimax, and others, allowing companies to train, test, and deploy with a single interface. Amazon is no longer positioning itself as merely a cloud provider, but as an AI ecosystem with vertical integration across hardware, models, infrastructure, and developer tools. Tranium 3 is the present. Tranium 4 is the signal that Amazon intends to compete at the very top of the model training hierarchy. Meanwhile, the broader industry shift makes Amazon's strategy even clearer. OpenAI is no longer relying solely on NVIDIA. It's building custom accelerators with AMD and Broadcom. Meta has its MTIA chips, powering large parts of its inference stack. Microsoft is developing the Maya architecture to reduce Azure's dependence on GPUs. Tesla keeps expanding Dojo to serve both autonomy and AI workloads. And Apple has quietly placed neural engines inside every device in its ecosystem. The monopoly era, the period when NVIDIA supplied almost the entire world's AI compute, is fading. What comes next is a multi-chip, multi-cloud, multi-vendor landscape where no single company controls the future of AI. So, do you think Amazon has finally built enough momentum to challenge NVIDIA's dominance? Or is Tranium still underrated by the industry? Comment your thought below. And if you want the real story behind the world's fastest moving tech and AI breakthroughs, make sure to like and subscribe to Evolving AI for daily coverage.